giving you a voice. Making it loud our own way. Welcome, Welcome to, to the fun. fun. With that being said, Justin's going to lead us off with our 25th ranked team. That's going to be team 179. From Riviera Beach, Florida, in La Grove and Suncoast High School, this is the Children of the Swamp. 40 wins, 10 losses overall, and were the winners of the Galileo Division in Houston. So a trip to Einstein was well earned by this Florida team who has turned out incredible robots year after year, but believe it or not, has not earned a trip to Einstein since 2007. So uh, a great, um, uh, well-deserved Accomplishment for them when they haven't achieved in a while. Uh, they teamed up with 971 and 498, and despite a loss in quarterfinal one, uh, won the next six straight matches to advance the round robin. Uh, during the round robin, unfortunately, they went two and three to end their season. Um, but it was really awesome. You know, 179 is one of those teams that always kind of releases, or the past few years has released uh, their robot um, a couple days prior to the end of build season, which is already impressive uh, to say the least. But they always kind of set the mark early um, with where, you know, those super competitive teams might be. Um, and it was just awesome to see them be rewarded uh, with a trip to Einstein this year. Yeah, I think, I've, like we said, Pre Houston 179, I just really like a lot. Just a really fantastic machine um, from down here, and I'm just uh, it's kind of see this team in 180 um, and others from this area. Just a new light, just being really kind of in the neighborhoods that these teams are. Um, it's kind of going to just be fun going forward. We uh, side note, uh, we're leaving Florida this Sunday. We're leaving, so um, but uh, yeah, so cool. I love the Children of the Swamp. Um, great looking robot and a, a great job. So as far as 25th. Um, I think it could be a little bit higher. Uh, they, have just, they have a good machine, but um, you know, obviously these these are so subjective to to up or down. You know, but. yeah. So chat, let us know too where you think uh, you know they voted that it, before championships. Where do you think they fall now after championships? Would be great to see. Yep, definitely. All right. Sorry, Justin. We kind of have them all backwards just because. Uh, yeah, I'm just, I'm just gonna, we're just going to kind of roll with it, whatever it says. Yeah, whatever. <laughs> All right. So in the 24th spot, we have Team 4362. From Brighton, Michigan, and Cheryl Stockwell Prep Academy, it's the Gems with an overall record of 60, 25, and 4. They were the quarterfinalists in the Carson Division in Detroit. So great season for the Gems. A district win at Jackson and winning their division and and took the home the, the big win. Um, of all divisions at MSC. In the Carson division, they would rank seventh and captain the sixth alliance. Um, they would lose in the quarterfinals to the number three alliance. But a great season for the Gems. Um, obviously, winning MSC is not an easy feat at all. Um, I do think, you know, they're just squeezing here into the top 25. Um, I do think, um, you know, they got in with their great performance there at the end uh, of the season. Um, so I think 24 is pretty accurate. Maybe they could drop a few spots as well, but. Again, just another another great season or a great season for the gems. And Tara, wasn't did we do an interview with them? I just can't. Yep. Yeah, we did a behind it. the bumper. I don't think we published that one yet. We still have uh, so. we still have quite a few to to publish. So make sure you check those out as well. Yeah. So, um, yeah. So we we've, we've started to kind of on a side note, we've started to trickle out kind of some of these behind the bumpers and, and more to come over the next week or so. So make sure you're checking out our YouTube, which uh, I know many of you are because the views there are incredible. So. All right, so moving on to our 23rd ranked team. Oh, sorry, Justin, I just stole it from you. <laughs> That's going to be team. <laughs> Go ahead. It's going to be team 125. They're from Boston, Massachusetts, and Revere, Brookline, and Boston Latin High Schools. It's the Neutrons. They have an overall record of 69 and 34, and they were the winners. Uh, or, excuse me, they were um, the semifinalists of the Darwin Division. So Neutron, Neutrons had five blue banners heading into. Uh, the Detroit champs, two district wins, district championship win, and a district chairman's award, and a district championship chairman's award. On the Darwin division, they went 6-4 and four with a 2.4 ranking score average and would be selected number third overall by 225 Tech Fire. As we've talked about, 125 has really just kind of really been an upward trend this year. Um, but and like I said, would unfortunately fall in the semifinals the alliance that would go on to be world champ. So that's always kind of um, like, you know, at least a consolation prize there. So I think this is a, a good spot for 125. Could be could be up a little bit higher, too, as well. Um, and then, Justin, you have some comments here or slash from Kristen, Christine? Yeah, so, so Christine made these comments, and I'll just read them. Uh, she said it was awesome to play with 225 in their alliance. Came really close in the semifinals. Their first match, 503 died. Uh, they lost by one point, six foul, six foul points against, uh, which is a bummer. So not the exit they were hoping for, obviously, but it was a loss to our friends on 40 for 81. We're happy to see them take it all. Uh, our match schedule was definitely not kind to us, per usual, but our drive team hit their stride as champs. And overall, we were happy with how, we, how uh, they performed. So... Uh, I, I, you know, I agree with what Mike said. A, a great season for 125. 
Um, maybe not exactly where they were hoping um, throughout the season, but uh, definitely maybe the 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 most matches played, 69 and 34. Yeah. That is a lot of matches. Yes, it is. Always is. I think we had I, says, think, I, I think, think 23 Sussman. is appropriate for them, honestly. Yeah. I, yeah. Yeah. But I, I think that's a that's a good spot. Uh, even after like champs, I think that's about where I put them actually. Yeah, I think Justin. I think we had mentioned this last week as you were on. But Neutron since what what was it, Tyler? Like 2013 or something has played a hundred more matches than anybody else. Wow. I think or something. Yeah, like I was. So uh, I forget what the exact stat. His average of like 20 more matches a season or something. Yeah. yeah, something crazy. So crazy. Cool. All right. So moving on to our 22nd ranked team. That's going to be nine ten. From Madison Heights, Michigan, Bishop Foley Catholic High School. It's the Foley Freeze 50, 29 and 2 overall. And with the corner finalists at the Arc on the Archimedes field in Detroit. So despite just one blue band of the season, 910 was a force on Archimedes. They put up six rockets earning those additional ranking points with their alliances and earned the eighth eighth ranking on their field. Their alliance captain the number seven alliance after declining a selection earlier on, and along with 2231 and 2054. Um, to see their width, but despite taking a match from the number two alliance, uh, they would uh, fall in the quarterfinals. So a great season for the Floyd Freeze. Um, we were actually hoping that uh, once they kind of declined and were stuck, stuck at seven, um, you know, I, I'm on 30-15. We competed with Floyd Freeze and Archimedes. We thought there was a good uh, chance we might end up with them. Uh, we just missed out on it, but they were uh, a really incredible team. Arguably, you know, we had talked pre-show. They maybe should have been picked a, a little bit higher than – um, the team they end up declining, but uh, in general, just another great season for 9-10. And again, I think a team that's pretty appropriately placed um, based on their performance at, at um, on Archimedes. I think maybe before this, before Archimedes, uh, maybe they're a little high, uh, maybe mm -hmm. are not quite deserving to be on the list, but they really played well um, this weekend. Mm -hmm. I think we did an interview with Foley Freeze as well, Tyler. That right? sounds right. <laughs> we did a lot. Okay, so between Houston and Detroit, if you include like all the post interviews, uh, Mike, I think we did about fifty or so. So they're a little fuzzy on which ones we might exactly yeah, that's do. That's right. I know. There's a lot that we wanted to get to, and I just can't remember which ones we actually did or not. So. Real quick side thing uh, from chat. Uh, we don't know what teams you're on unless you make screen names that are appropriate. So if you say inappropriate things, I don't care if you're on the team. We will delete and or time you out. So just don't be a moron. Rip. <laughs> exactly. Cool deal. All right. Moving along on the 21st spot, we have team 2046. From Maple Valley, Washington, and Tahoma Senior High School, it's Bear Metal. Uh, an overall record of 78 and 15. They were the winners of the Hopper Division in Houston. So, an absolute stellar year for Bear Metal. They took district wins at West Valley and Auburn, um, also, District Chairman's Award at West Valley. Um, they would uh, be winners overall of the Pacific Northwest uh, District Championship, and they would consider, uh, continue their success in Houston on the Hopper Division, where they ranked 10th with a 2.4 ranking score average. They would be selected number one overall by Team Taters um, and would take the division win in eight matches there. Uh, they would rank fifth in the round robin um, after that, but a solid robot from 2046, um, maybe a touch higher for them. Um, I, don't know, I, I think like post champs for sure. Yeah. Yeah, but um, definitely, I mean, two just, I mean, but going into champs, two district wins. I can't. I, I used to have it up. They, they uh, filmed the they filmed the uh, twenty nine ten shadow so much. So I mean, I know they won with twenty nine ten, but Jack in the Bot, I think definitely uh, was the prime jewel coming out. And then twenty forty six obviously performed much better because Jack and Bot's out in the quarters. Yeah, uh, but. Uh, I, th I think that's why, you know, we might have saw, are they a great team? No doubt. I don't think anybody doubts uh, that at all. Um, and it was really cool to see them uh, take uh, the, you said Hopper division, right? Um, yeah. yeah. See them take yeah, the Hopper, Hopper division. Heading into Houston, they were, they were 12. Yeah. So cool deal. All, all right. right. Well, that's still oh, me. Sorry. Still you. Oh, it's no. me. Still me. Sorry. <laughs> Go ahead. <laughs> So Mike's going to talk about the 20 spot, Team 987. From Las Vegas, Nevada, and Summerlin Memorial High School, it's High Rollers. They have an overall record of 42 and 10, and they were the finalists on the Curie Division. So the High Rollers took home three banners prior to champs with wins at San Diego and Las Vegas, and also Woody Flowers' finals award in there. Um, in the stack division that was Curie, the High Rollers would end up 20th, a little surprise there, uh, personally, uh, with a 2.5 ranking score average, but they would be selected number two overall by Strike Force. Uh, and would beat the seven and three alliances uh, to take home the finalist uh, medal against the number four alliance. So I really like we Tyler and I kind of had a science conversation about it, but they have a kind of um, a really unique hatch pickup kind of mm -hmm. um, where they grab it kind of from the inside top of the hatch. 
um, from the hole in the middle there. Uh, but just really they get to kind of scoop it off the human player station and kind of just drop it um, and place it on uh, their, the cargo ship or the rocket. Um, the really look of the season, uh, agree with their placement here, maybe a couple higher. Um, but really another bounce, a bounce back season for 987. And I know, Tyler, you got to see this robot up close um, at Las Vegas and in Detroit. So I don't know if you had any thoughts on them. Uh, and I know 987 will take exception to saying it's a bounce back season, but uh, but it was, guys. I mean, you, you guys, uh, I think 987 looked uh, leagues better than what they did last year. Uh, and they still looked good last year, but I, I think their robot was, you know, in, in the top tier, if not very close to the top tier consideration. And, um, Mike, I agree with you. We talked about this. I think their hatch um, intake mechanism was great. I think they were a little slow on placement, um, which I thought worked against them a little bit going in. But um, I thought that that overall, um, they still have a fantastic machine. Uh, I was expecting number two alliance to actually take the division. Um, just hot take there, I guess. And I think a lot of it was because picking up Argos as well, too. Uh, I think they had the most complete alliance. Um, so I was disappointed to see, uh, you know, in that alliance, Strike Force not have their suction cup work. 97 had to bear the brunt of everything in the finals. Um, and, you know, I still think they fought quite valiantly and I'm still a huge fan of their team. Uh, awesome performance by them. Congrats to them for being finalists. Mm -hmm. Cool. All right, so bouncing over to the Houston Championship, we're going to hear in our 19th spot about 973. From Tescadero, California, Tescadero High School, it's the Graybots. 48-8-1 overall, and we're the winners of the Houston Championship. So the relatively low ranking maybe reflects the feelings of the voters on their chance of winning the championship, but they proved their worth taking the number one spot on Newen and teamed up with 13-23 and 50-26 and dominated the division. The Alliance went 4-1 and one during the Ron Robin and won the rubber match in the finals 114 to 103 to take the championship win. So this brings the 973 championship count to two with their most recent um, coming in 2011 before this. So congrats to 973, the Graybots. I think they're grossly underranked. Yeah. Uh, I thought they were exceptional um, going into the championship uh, and obviously winning the world championship. Um, I know this voting doesn't take that into account, um, but I think that just kind of proves that. And we all kind of, I think, talked about that, that they were a little low, um, a little low going in. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and I think, you know, 973, obviously I, I, their championship performance bumps them up a few rankings mm -hmm. uh, after that. Um, I I had them, uh, I think, at 16 prior to pre-champs, and I think after champs, if I were to reevaluate them, they'd be pretty close to the top 10 uh, for something like that. I Straight up, I mean, uh, the, the decision the whole time was, is 13-23 going to pick 973 or 29-10? Well, guess what? 973 <laughs> ranks first and chooses their own destiny, <laughs> secures their own fate, and makes it happen. And that's, I think, the, the real kudos goes there, is that 100% you know, everybody true. everybody just discounted everybody except for 1323, and 973 just comes in, kicks ass, and takes names, and they did it their way. Um, they Burger Kinged it up, you know? <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, you're funny. absolutely right. You know, I, I saw a few matches with uh, 1323 and Jack in the Bot, and I even posted on my Facebook, I was like, this game over. They're going to absolutely dominate, and 973 said, ah, not so fast. That's right. Uh, yep. And really, um, you know, took, took control of their own destiny, like you said, and yep. the rest, as they say, is history. <laughs> Definitely. All right, so moving along in 18th spot, we have Team 3538. From Auburn Hills, Michigan, and Evandale High School, it's the Robo Jackets. They have an overall record of 84, 18, and 3. That's a lot of matches. And we're the winners of the Curie Division in Detroit. So a crazy good season for 35 38. They took wins in FIM at Southfield, Go Lake, Alp and the Alpena districts. It would be finalists in the MSC in that epic five match battle for the win there. Um, on Curie, they would rank six with the 3.0 ranking score average and would be selected uh, by 195 to the number four lines. Just an absolute amazing series of matches for the Robo Jackets. They would um, take the win there in Curie, like I said. They would beat uh, the five, one, and two seeds. Uh, for the win being there on the fourth seed. So just amazing. So uh, we, we mentioned to a little bit before we have kind of that interview with 195. Uh, and we did talk, we did ask them to talk about kind of their alliance partners there. So um, really tough one deciding where they belong here. Um, possibly a bit higher. Uh, I don't know what you guys had any other thoughts on them, but I'm trying to pull up uh, where they ranked. They, so they were ranked eighth on the Detroit top 25. So uh, you know, I think for, for pre-champs, I think this is quite appropriate. I think afterwards people would say that this is criminally too low and they should be up higher. Uh, but I think from a pre-champs going in, I would put them up a few spots as well. Uh, I think we'll see some teams that are above them uh, down a few spots. And, uh, you know, it's just the way we got to look at it sometimes. Uh, Robo Jackets, I thought, 
did a phenomenal job. Uh, they were defended against pretty much the entire time. It was cool to see as uh, being shown in finals after Strike Force broke down to see uh, two uh, powerhouse Michigan teams go up against each other. So I thought that was pretty cool uh, for that as well. Mm -hmm. Yep, yep. Cool. All right, let me get back to it. And, oh, it's me again. God, Justin. And it's you again <laughs> in the 17th spot talking about 1241. From Mississauga, Ontario, Canada, and Rick Hansen Secondary School, it's Theory 6. They have an overall record of 54 and 16, and they were the semifinalists on the Curie Division. So one district win and overall winners at the Ontario District Championship. They would enter the stacked division with destiny in their hands, kind of like we just talked about 973, with kind of all that speculation on 1114-2056 alliance, um, which 1241 has paired up with both of them this season. They would end up 27th with a record of 6-4 and four and a 2.2 .2 ranking square average, and they were taken third overall and would pass through quarterfinals against the sixth seed, but would fall short to the, to the two seed in semis. Um, they were working hard all weekend. Tao and I tried many times to um, see if we could do it behind the bumpers with them. Um, but they were just seemed to always either be out for a match or on the practice field. They're on the practice um, field all the time. Which is great. And they were right there, yeah. which is perfect, because they could kind of see when lines were short and stuff. So um, maybe a touch high post-champs, um, 17 here. Um, but just another great season for uh, Theory 6. And as a lot of people think, uh, no district chairman's award for them this year, which yeah. just seems you know criminal for that. Um, not really sure what happened there. Um, which is bizarre. So a great team on and off the field, another great season for them. I uh, look forward to seeing seeing uh, how they do again next year. But yeah, and I think 41. I think 1241 fell into a spot being ranked 27th in their division that, uh, you know, 78, probably they didn't make the most optimal alliance together. And I think, uh, you know, that, that might have caused a little bit of issues. It, it Their first qu quarter's match, uh, their opposing alliance had a red card. Uh, so like pretty much got them in the semis, but uh, when the semis when the semis came, uh, the number uh, five four four lines right uh, number oh wait who did play against them number two lines why am I miss not remembering this correctly uh, the number two lines I think handled them pretty pretty readily uh, for that and they just weren't able to get the power and I think if you're twelve forty one uh, you might have been hoping you might have dropped one more rank because I think it could have been a little bit different uh, but still congrats to them for a big season. Mm -hmm. Cool deal. All right. Justin's gonna play us out <laughs> uh, before our break here <laughs> with our 16th ring team. That's 3:30 from Hermosa Beach, California. It's the Beach Bots, 41, six and one overall, and we're the semifinalists on the Carver Division in Houston. So the final season, the Beach Bots added three more blue banners to their historic tally on the Carver Division. They ranked fifth and advanced to the semifinals before ending their season and their team. I was trying to think of a better way to say that, like. And with their retirement, I don't know. Yeah. After three three matches, it's sad to see uh, this team go. Certainly, who have been a historic powerhouse since uh, my first year in FRC, which is 2005. Um, but they've inspired a generation of robot builders, and certainly will always be remembered. So, uh, another great season, winning a lot of matches and winning a lot of banners for 3:30. Um, but this is it. It's kind of the end of an era. Yeah, it really is. And we were lucky to uh, to get a behind the bumpers with them. Mm -hmm. um, and that was really great. Um, and just uh, just legendary, you know what I mean? And, you know, obviously so many people know about them, have so much respect for them. Literally year after year, putting out great robots. Um, 2000, what was that, where they self-righted up? Uh, 20, 2016, yeah. Yeah, 2016. Yeah, an epic moment. I was saying, Justin knows <laughs> well about that. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> uh, boy. So, yeah. yeah. The kings of the one by one square tube aluminum. Let me tell you. Right. Yeah, yeah awesome. it will be. It will be sad to see th three thirty go. Uh, you know, they went out with a still a great season, and absolutely. Uh, uh, you know what? Hats off to uh, you know, uh, man, Shane, right? Um, yep. And, and everybody else on that team for all the years of dedication they put in. And you know what? There's nothing wrong with saying at some point we have to call it quits. And you know, it, everything ends at some point, right? I mean, and you know, teams can sometimes pass on and move the torch, but sometimes it doesn't. And, you know, we got the C330. I thought it was actually great that they announced it ahead of time. Uh, yeah. So we got to really appreciate them for one last season. Mm -hmm. Agreed. Yeah. Yeah, that's, uh, that's so much better um, when you're able to know, you know, rather than just, you, you know. Yeah. I'm sure a lot of people went out of their way to go see Shane and his wife and, and 330 and really, you know, kind of go out. So, 16 yeah. in the top 25, number one in our hearts. <laughs> <laughs> like it. It's really a, it's a short, you know, the Penguin Ears were a team that kind of was a, a force for a while and went away. Mm -hmm. 
not very, not very often as a powerhouse team uh, retired. There was rumors that the pink team, 233, was gone. Yep. Uh, they kind of made a miraculous recovery, but it's sad. We need your help to keep fun loud, live, and independent. Help us by visiting our Patreon to pledge your support at patreon.com forward slash first updates now. You can also support fun live on Twitch for a few bucks a month or by linking your Prime account for free and clicking subscribe. Thank you to all of our co-executive producers keeping fun loud, live, and independent.